Welcome to the Corner Post Channel, your ultimate source for all things football. Dive into the exhilarating world of the beautiful game with us as we bring you the latest updates, breaking news, in-depth analyses, and exclusive insights into the footballing universe. From electrifying match highlights to expert commentary, transfer rumors to tactical masterstrokes, join us on this thrilling ride through the highs and lows of the footballing landscape. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual enthusiast, get ready to score big on all the football news you crave. Right here on the Corner Post channel. Ethan Mbappé, 16, makes his PSG debut alongside older brother Kylian as the France superstar shines on his birthday with incredible long-range goal. There was a heartwarming moment in Paris Saint-Germain's 3-1 win over Metz on Wednesday evening as 16-year-old Ethan Mbappé made his first team debut alongside older brother, Killian. The Mbappé duo have long been waiting for the moment and were finally reunited on the pitch when Ethan came off the bench as a substitute. PSG manager Luis Enrique decided to give the teenager his senior debut in the closing moments of stoppage time, when the French giants were firmly in control of the result. The younger Mbappé bears striking resemblance to his older sibling, and both were seen smiling when he stepped onto the pitch in the League One clash. The Parc de Princes applauded him on, and further celebrations took place at full time between the two brothers who were in celebration mode after PSG's 12th league win of the season. Developing as a defensive-minded midfielder in his youth career, the French teen has already played for Le Blues at youth level, but is yet to be included in Dider Deschamps' senior squad. 25-year-old Nabap showed his younger sibling how to find the back of the net with two goals against Metz, with the first being an incredible long-range effort. The World Cup winner was celebrating his birthday and gave himself the best present of all, with a sensational goal that doubled PSG's lead. Receiving the ball to feed on the edge of the box, Mbappé looked up before curling an effort towards goal that left the back of the net bursting. His sensational shot sailed over the head of opposition goalkeeper Alexander Aukija, who was left stranded between the sticks. Manchester United's dismal season continues as their loss to West Ham, a 13th in all competitions, marks their worst start to a season since 1930. The Hammers' 2-0 win at the London Stadium means United have just one win in seven games in all competitions and sit eighth in the Premier League. Former midfielder Paul Scholes said his old side have big problems, while manager Eric Ten Hag said they are underperforming. Ex-England striker Alan Shearer added on BBC Match of the Day, It is embarrassing for Man Ut. They have scored 18 goals this season. Only Sheffield United have scored fewer. Eric Ten Hag says we have to stick to the plan, but I haven't got a clue what that plan is. There is something drastically wrong. Not scoring goals, not winning games, a growing list of injuries, and an ongoing saga around their ownership. What is going on at Manchester United? Luton lived up to their pledge of making it a special day for convalescing captain Tom Lockyer by beating Newcastle United at an emotionally charged Kenilworth Road. Andrus Townsend headed home the Hatters' winner against his former club in Luton's first Premier League game since Lockyer's collapse at Bournemouth seven days earlier. Townsend held up Lockyer's number four shirt in celebration after the goal, one of a number of tributes paid by Luton players and fans to their stricken skipper before, during and after the game. All the chat throughout the week was do it for our captain. Former England winger Townsend told BBC Sport, he's an incredible person. He had the issue, a previous cardiac arrest, at Wembley in the championship playoff final and put his body his life on the line for the first 16 games. So we are doing it for him, and we are going to keep doing it for him until if and when he is fit to come back. It was an emotional roller coaster today, but thankfully we got the win at the end of it. Only the woodwork denied Luton a more straightforward victory as the excellent Ross Barkley struck the bar with a 35-yard thunderbolt and Jacob Brown also hit the frame of the goal from closer in. Newcastle did mount increasing second-half pressure as Alexander Isaac had an equalizer ruled out for a marginal offside while Bruno Guimaraes and Anthony Gordon also went close. However, they slipped to a fourth successive away lead defeat to stay seventh, while Luton remain 18th but move within two points of safety. 
the Hatters also have a game in hand on Nottingham Forest, the side directly above them, but Townsend says such concerns pale in comparison with their captain's plight. In a way, it was easy to not feel too much pressure, to not be anxious or worried about where we are in the table, he added. It puts things into perspective. We didn't do much tactical work in the week. It was all about making sure we were in the right frame of mind, knowing there are more important things than football. New manager Nuno Espirito Santo has said Nottingham Forest deserve more respect after Willy Bali was shown a controversial red card on Saturday. Bali was sent off after just 23 minutes of Forest's 3-2 defeat by Bournemouth. Despite winning the ball, referee Rob Jones showed the Ivory Coast defender a second yellow card for his tackle on Adam Smith. I have seen it over and over again, and I still cannot understand it, Nuno said. It's a mistake. I think he should have taken more time for VAR, the video assistant referee, to advise him. We and our fans deserve more respect. It's not fair. Arsenal maintained their place at the top of the Premier League after a thrilling draw with Liverpool at Anfield. Victory for either side would have put them top of the table at Christmas, but they had to settle for a share of the points in an entertaining encounter. Arsenal delivered the perfect start when defender Gabriel headed home from Martin Odegaard's free kick after only four minutes. However, Liverpool regrouped and were level after 29 minutes when Mohamed Salah thrashed a finish high past Gunners keeper David Raya at his near post after collecting Trent Alexander-Arnold's raking pass. In between, Liverpool looked to be denied a clear penalty when Odegaard handled and after that Jurgen Klopp's side had the better opportunities, although Arsenal were always a threat. Substitute Harvey Elliott grazed the outside of the post while Alexander-Arnold wasted the best chance of the half when he blasted against the bar, after Liverpool swamped Arsenal on the counter-attack. Absolutely we take confidence from the result, Liverpool manager Klopp told Sky Sports. You have to take confidence from these results and performances against a top, top side. We did not play bad against Man City, for example, but it was not as good as today, and you have to take these things forward. Arsenal manager Michael Arteta told BBC Match of the Day, an unbelievable game of football, one of the most intense I've witnessed in 20 years in this league. For many moments we were on top, in the last 20 minutes we wanted it more, but a draw is a fair result. We were determined to attack and cause them problems. They are a team who cause chaos. They are so vertical and direct. They are the best in the world at doing that Liverpool were left counting the cost of the failure to find the finishing touch for the second successive league game at Anfield. They were held to a draw by a stubborn Manchester United last Sunday and had to settle for a point once more in a contest of much higher quality against Arsenal, responding to Gabriel's early strike with another magnificent goal from Salah. Manager Jurgen Klopp will reflect on two big moments which mean his side stay behind the Gunners going into Christmas after an often frenetic meeting at Anfield. Liverpool will be furious that they seem to be denied a clear penalty when Odegaard handled in the first half and Alexander-Arnold should have buried what could have been the match winner late on. They restricted Arsenal's opportunities in the second half but this is an outcome that will satisfy Michael Arteta's side and perhaps, most of all, new club World Cup champions Manchester City. In his media conference, Klopp added, The maturity and the courage that we showed I think we should be really proud of our players. We have experience of being where we are today. We should be really happy because that shows a lot of consistency for this new group in the best lead in the world to lead two years in a row. But that's it. We are where we want to be right now, both in the Premier League and the Champions League. Of course there are things that we have to improve, especially killing games. With the amount of dominance we are showing, some of the games are too close. That's all for today's video. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel.